In this tutorial, we will learn how to fill an empty container with many objects like this. We can see here that the glass jar is being filled with many small colorful cubes. We can easily do this using the rigid body physics. And we will use the EV engine in Blender for this tutorial. So, let us start with a blank new file. We will turn this cube into a shiny, plastic dice and fill an empty jar with its copies. First go to the modifiers tab and add one bevel modifier. Change the bevel amount to 0.4 and change the number of segments to 10. Then apply this modifier. You can also apply the Shade Smooth option from the Object menu. Then scale it down by 0.3. We will now add the plastic material to it. So, switch over to the Rendered View mode. Let us also turn on the HDRI environment for a better lighting in our scene. Now, go to the Materials tab. For this default material, let us first change the color to a bright red color and increase this value to 1. Then scroll down and change the specular value to 1 and the specular tint to 0.5. Then change the roughness value to 0.1. So here is our plastic object, but you may not get a nice texture like this unless you have HDRI lighting in your scene. We turned on HDRI from here, but this option is temporary. We made a separate tutorial that covers everything on HDRI lighting. And several other techniques are also used here, like the rigid body physics and the array modifier. You can get the link to each individual tutorial in the video description below, in case you need it. So, we will now create three more such cubes with three more colors for a variation. While the cube is selected, press Shift-D and enter on your keyboard to duplicate it. We need to move it up a little bit above the first one. Now, for this new cube, let us go to the Material tab. Please copy this material to a new material and change the color to something else, maybe yellow. We can directly type 0.05 here. Then select both the cubes together. Press Shift-D and Enter to make their copies. Then move them up like before, in a vertical line. Now select this third cube. Make a copy of its material. Then change its base color to green this time. We can use a hue of 0.35 here. Please also reduce this value to 0.5. Then select the last cube. And we have to again copy its material to a new one. We will change the color to blue now. The hue should be 0.65. And to make it little more dark, change this value to 0.75. So, we got four different cubes with four different colors here. Let us move them to a new collection. So create another collection here. It will soon get flooded with objects, so better to keep them clean. Let us hide this collection for now. And also collapse it. Now for the jar, go to the Add menu and add one cylinder. We will convert this into a hollow glass jar. So, go to the Edit mode. Turn on the Face Selection mode. Select the top face and hit X. Then from this menu, select the face option to delete it. So we got the top face removed. Now turn on the vertex selection mode. We will do it little fast and complete it quickly. We need to extrude and resize the vertices to create a shape like this. Let us now go back to the object mode. Next, go to the modifiers tab and let us add one bevel modifier. The amount field should be 0.1. Just change the number of segments to 10. Then apply this modifier. After that, add one edge split modifier and apply it. Then, add one subdivision surface modifier. Change both these levels to 3. And also, apply this modifier. And finally, add one modifier called solidify modifier. Remove this offset value. Then change the thickness to 0.03 and apply this modifier as well. So we got the jar ready. The shape is ready, but we need to resize it a little bit for a better look. So go to the object properties and change the X and Y scale factors to 1.75 and Z scale factor to 1.5. Let us also move it up a little bit, maybe by the same 1.5 units. We are done with the jar, the only thing left is its material. We need to add a glass material 
and for that we have to enable some settings. First in the Render Properties tab, enable this screen space reflections. And expand it. Turn on the Refraction option as well. Then go to the Materials tab. Create a new material. We need to make few changes to turn it into a glass material, like this roughness value should be 0 or 0.1. Scroll down below, and change the transmission value to 1. Let us also change the IOR value to 1.2. We are almost done. For the last step, scroll down here, and enable the screen space refraction option. So, the glass jar is finally ready to be filled with the cubes. Let us unhide the second collection now, that has got all our cubes. Expand this collection and select all the four cubes together. The cubes are partly hidden or behind the glass jar, we need to move them up. Just place them little above the opening of the jar like this, they will eventually fall into the jar. Next, we will join these four cubes, make copies of them using the array modifier, and place them in a vertical line. So while the cubes are selected, please go to the object menu, and join them together as one single object. Then in the modifiers tab, add an array modifier. Let us change the number of copies to 15. Then change the X factor value to 0, and increase the Z factor to 1.5. So we got 15 copies of this set, or exactly 60 cubes. Now apply this modifier. And then go to the edit mode. While everything is selected, from the mesh menu, select separate, and separate by loose parts. All the cubes are now turned into separate objects, under this second collection. Let us now go back to the object mode. From the object menu, select set origin, and origin to geometry. So, we can see that all the cubes have got their origins right at their individual centers. This step is very important. We will now set up the rigid body physics for them. So select the bottommost cube, or you can select just any one of them. Let us select this first one, and then go to the physics tab. Turn on the rigid body properties. Then change the shape field to box type. Expand the surface response section and increase this bounciness value, maybe to 0.5. Now we will apply the same to all other cubes. Press 1 on your number keypad to go to the front view mode. We have to select all the cubes here. You can easily select them together from this object tree, but don't include the first cube yet. Select the first cube at the end, so that it remains as our active selection. Now go to the object menu, scroll down to the rigid body section, and select, copy from active. So the rigid body settings for this cube will be copied, to all other cubes as well. This is a nice way to save our time, instead of going into each one of them, and set it manually, which is practically impossible. Next, we have to also set up this jar as a rigid body. So enable its rigid body properties. Change it to a passive type object. And since it is a hollow object, we have to change its shape field to the mesh option. Let us also change the bounciness to 0.5. So we are done with the rigid bodies. Now if we run it, all the cubes will drop one by one into this empty jar. And to make it faster, in the scene properties, expand the rigid body section. Then increase the speed factor to 2 or 3. Finally, we will run the simulation. As you can see, the cubes are falling down, due to gravity, and filling this glass jar as expected. You can fill any container, following this simple method, but some of these cubes may also get bounced, after a collision with the jar, and fall outside the jar. Like we can see one cube here, which bounced from the jar, and in fact there are more cubes now falling outside. You can simply ignore them, if your only target is to just fill the jar, but we can surely do something better. Let us place one guiding object here, that will stop the cubes from deflecting, and force them to fall inside the jar, but it will be hidden from the camera. So go to the add menu, and add one, cylinder. We need to move it up, and place it at the opening of the jar. It should be slightly bigger than the jar, and hollow as well. So, go to the edit mode. Turn on the face selection mode, and select the top face. Then hit X, and delete the face. Similarly, delete the bottom face as well. So we got a simple, hollow cylinder now. Let us go back to the object mode. We need to make it little bigger. So, go to the object properties and increase the X, 
and the Y scale factors to 1.3. And let us double its height as well. Now we have to fine tune its position. It should be placed just above the jar opening, so that the cubes cannot escape from here. You can also use an inverted cone as the guiding object, same method. So for this cylinder, go to the physics tab and enable the rigid body properties. Change its type from active to passive. And then, change its shape field to mesh type. That's all. We can now run the simulation once again, from the beginning. So the cubes are falling into the jar like before. We can actually hide this cylinder, so that it is not visible at all. Now we have to wait and watch, whether any cube gets bounced like before, and gets lost or not. They should not, as the guiding cylinder will stop them from going anywhere else. So, these are the last few cubes, and as you can see, these two cubes are probably trying to deflect, but they are confined within our hidden cylinder. So they have to finally get into the jar only, there is no other option left. And as the time is passing by, the cubes are getting more organized inside the jar, leaving more space for the other cubes. It happens automatically. Let us look at it also from the top view. Looks nice. You may see some rectangles here, appearing for each cube. These are the bounding boxes for rigid bodies, and they appear only in the viewport. They won't be visible in the actual render. So, this way you can fill any hollow object, with a collection of smaller objects, or even with a mix of various objects, by using the rigid body physics in Blender. We will create more such tutorials on various topics in rigid bodies, and overall in Blender animation. Please let us know in the comments if you have any questions. I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.